and possibility, capable of developing into actuality. That's what potential means. It means that you're here and you have the ability to get where he wants you to be. It means that you have this, but you can become this. Mm. Potential. Now, potential is important because as we read in the scripture, there will come a time that God's going to look to you and, and need you to be where you're supposed to be so that he can accomplish, accomplish his perfect will. Come on. Come on. But if you're not there when he needs you to be there, then he's going to be, he refers to us as if though our foot is out of joint. How many have ever sprained your ankle? That is a painful process. How many have ever had a toothache? Come on. All of you should Come raise on. your hand. Come on. How many have ever had, and this is gross, but how many have ever had an abscess on your tooth? That's Ooh. gross. Hello. But as disgusting as it is, it's how the Bible is looking to when you're not available, that's the same pain that we feel. Wow. And in ministry, the Lord has a sense of pain when we're not where we're supposed to be. Now I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Let's read a passage of scripture. One of my favorite passages of scripture. So it talks about the vineyard. Uh, the vineyard has always been referenced to in the Bible as the Jewish folks or the Hebrew people. It always references different points within inside of that, like a tower, a watchtower. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 5 and verse number 1. You get to say amen. amen. Now let me sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. Isn't that eloquent? How the word of God in King James is so eloquent and elegant as it writes. It says, My well beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. Underline that word right there, a very fruitful hill. So he dug it up, he cleared out its stones. Planted it with the choices by. He built a tower in the midst and also made wine presses in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes. Say good grapes. Good grapes. But it brought through wild grapes. Mm. Turn to me and ask him, are you a wild grape? Wild grape. <laughs> Some translations translated retarded grapes. Oh. <laughs> And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge me between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good fruit or good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, the word wild is, is a very uh, familiar uh, uh, definition or word that we read in the Bible. <laughs> that often refers to rebelliousness. You think of a wild animal that has unrestraint. You think of a, a donkey that has a, 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 a very bad attitude. Come on. You know, they don't want to go where you want them to go. They don't feel like they ain't going to do it. They know we got nothing here. Right? <laughs> but have you ever met somebody that just don't want to do it for no other reason except that they just don't want to do it? Come on now, Pastor. Like that? Come on, come on. You're a wild great. Mm. He says, I went through all this trouble to create this vineyard so that I dug it, I planted it, it's on a fruitful hill. By the way, your home is a fruitful hill. The church that you attend is a fruitful hill. And when you do all the things that you're supposed to do to create a, an atmosphere that will produce good fruit, when we don't come up and be that good fruit, then it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, big question to us as to why. When we have all the components in place, and that takes us back to who you really are. Glory. That takes us back to, have you responded to what God has provided for you? Or is this home simply a house for you to live for 9 or 12 months so that you get on do what you really want to do? No, you're sitting in a fruitful hill right now. Come on, somebody. And we expect you to produce. Mm. We're not doing all this investment so that you can go and, 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 and go back to the world. That's what life's designed for. It's designed to make you a man of God or a woman of God, a soldier in the army of God. It's designed to make you a preacher, a pastor, a leader. Uh, it's, it's designed to make you a missionary. It's designed to, to partner up with your pastor and take your city for God. Mm. It's not designed to make 
make you lazy. It's not designed to make you a person that just wants to work in a field somewhere. No, it's designed to, so that you can become fruitful as a man or a woman of God. And if that means getting your family back, I'm so blessed with the testimony this morning that his son is getting back in his life. He says, I want to yeah. come back into the home group and move me so much. I want to do what you do. That is fruitfulness. Come on. Good. Like you. Amen. That's good. Some of y'all didn't have that before. You were rejected by family and friends or whatever. So you, you got to want to maximize your potential. Now turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 11, a very familiar verse. The Gospel of Mark chapter 11. This is what I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about. When you read the Gospel of Mark, you got to understand, first of all, this was the first gospel that was written in the... Uh, in the canon of the New Testament, this actually was the one that was written first. Mark was actually one of the disciples that uh, uh, actually wasn't a disciple, he actually came into it later on in the game. And Mark is the one that was a little bit younger, so his writing is more in the area of, uh, of uh, the supernatural. It's, it's got more miracles that are, that are uh, asserted to in the Gospel of Mark, and like John is the Gospel of Love, Matthew is talking to the Jewish folks, and then, and then Luke is, is more educated, so he's dealing more specifically, and you have different types of terminology. Mark is more into the uh, miracles, so most young people want to see things all around them, right? Come on. Mark chapter 11, verse 12. Now, the next day, when he had come out from Bethany, he was hungry, he meaning Jesus. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see it perhaps. He would find something on it, and he came to it, and he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again, and his disciples heard it. That's important. His disciples heard it. Now, Jesus is he's dealing with something here. Everything that Jesus did or said had a specific reason, and it was directed for a specific purpose. Mm. Never do you read what he said or did was random, or it was, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, it was always specifically designed for a purpose, such in the case here. It, it tells us that he was hungry. One that gives you his humanity of his divinity, he also shows his humanity. And it says that he moved towards this tree, and he says, I want to eat something on this tree, but he only found leaves because it wasn't time for the fruit. Now you would think, well, that's kind of cold blooded. Jesus went and cursed a tree when it wasn't time for the tree to have fruit, and so he jammed the tree. Well, you got to remember again, Jesus always has a purpose. It's actually, the fig tree is, is representative again of the people of Israel. And he's looking for the potential for his people to accept it as the Messiah. That's the terminology we're talking about. And because he's showing this depiction in a life situation, they actually look at him as a man. And, and let me tell you something, if you're not spiritually in tune, you're going to miss him. Come on. Come on. You hear me now? Come on. So they saw him looking like, well, why would he curse a tree? What he was really saying is, I'm showing you where you're at. Glory. Now, finding nothing but leaves on, the, on a promising tree is a little bit discouraging. Mm. He was disappointed and turns judgment, as the prophet says in Jeremiah, he, he turns it into a curse. In Jeremiah 8, 13, the Bible reads, I'll read it to you, I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig tree, and the leaves shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. That's a prophecy. That's a, a word, and Jesus is illustrating that to the people of Israel. Like the fig tree, fig tree Israel is God's chosen people, right? And, but they're not living up to their full potential. Mm. The scripture that we opened up with shows us that if you don't live at your full potential, if you're not where you're supposed to be, there's usually consequences for that. 